amazing, but another year has gone by. <laughs> and we are already into the second Sunday of the year. I uh, want to thank Manoa for remembering, and of course the congregation for remembering my wife and me as we celebrate our anniversary. On behalf of both of us, I just thank you for your, uh, certainly your love and the support that you have been to us all the all these days of our lives. Looks like there is an echo which needs to be corrected, which will be done, I guess. Uh, Manu was reminding us, well, uh, we are looking at another year and we are going to attempt many things and certainly I think that is how we should approach uh, the new year. Uh, you know, Christ is making everything new, so we want to make everything uh, also move into the newness uh, as we plan. I was talking with uh, our pastor Praveen and our pastor Sachin in uh, Pune. And I've been asking them to um, work out a what we call as an MAP. Uh, that is a ministry action plan 2023. So we are planning to work out various activities, schedule them for 2023, uh, recognizing that the theme for this year uh, from the GCI denomination is on leadership and enhancing and refining leadership so that the leading will be done well. So um, we're looking forward to working out that uh, MAP. And I'm sure many of you might have thoughts uh, we want the leadership team to suggest many things that needs to be done. So uh, do contribute your thoughts and we want to be uh, certainly a loving church, expressing the love of Jesus Christ in, in every way possible and also an efficient church, uh, making efficient use of all our resources. When I say resources, it's not just money and building and time, but also people. And uh, I was uh, very happy to see that Pano was inviting you for a testimony. I'm glad that is being included as part of our regular worship. We give you an opportunity to bless us by how God has blessed you. Um, Mano, you mentioned about uh, in your announcements uh, and in the prayer about uh, the restructuring. That's a huge mm -hmm. task that indeed we are going to uh, uh, embark upon, but I just wanted to fill you in. Is there still an echo? I'm not sure. Uh, the cable is shaking. All right. I don't know what to do with the cable now. Let me just see if I can tuck it in. Yeah. All right. Um uh, uh, Bertram Azvedu, our trustee in Mumbai, I had a conversation with him and he mentioned to me that uh, was it the fourth when we had the hearing? We had the last hearing uh, in front of the officer of the trust, uh, the charity commissioner's office. And they have now accepted all the documents that we have given. And Bertram said to me that on 20th, we will know for sure if the they have accepted everything and they have to pass an order. Once they pass the order, we have, I mean, the, the order will be deletion of the names of trustees who no more belong to GCI have decided to move away from us. We have passed the Red Sea. <laughs> I think the Lord is opening the Red Sea for us. And now when we go on to the other side, we have to now look for the promised land. <laughs> of course, all metaphorical. So we are just uh, looking forward to trudging along and moving forward. And uh, uh, I am, uh, you know, so very grateful. And I'm sure Mr. Rao is and all, that, all our trustees with the sweat, blood and tears that we have shed over the many years through the difficulties uh, trying to set things right. So thank you so much for your prayers. Thank you for sticking with us and uh, understanding how difficult it has been. But uh, we are grateful for his deliverance. And 
we are now constantly reminded that Jesus is our focus. It's all about him. And I was just looking at the last Sunday sermon uh, given by Praveen as we began our new year. And the focus was again on Jesus. Jesus indeed is our hope. And uh, through what I could understand, by the way, the volume was so low that I had to put it to my ear to listen. Uh, maybe we should correct that. Huh? But Jesus, you know, is the one who has conquered every problem, all the evil of this world. We will see the fullness of it, of course, at his second coming. I noticed you participated in the communion and I am beginning to see beautiful changes making, you know, coming, making way into our fellowship, into our worship. And I'm very pleased with that. And I'm glad that you're taking things forward. But that was very meaningful. Communion is symbolizing that Jesus is our salvation. Uh, he is the answer for every question of our lives. Uh, and so we were encouraged last week to begin the year uh, by recognizing that Jesus must be the center of our lives, center of 2023 for us and beyond. So today, as we um, reflect upon the reading that was done to us from Matthew chapter 3, I wanted to mention, and uh, this is something that we have been now progressively learning, looking at the liturgical calendar, the calendar that the Christian church uh, some denominations emphasize it, some don't, but we want to emphasize that because the liturgical calendar is centered around Jesus. And that is our focus. And so the liturgical calendar uh, mentions that today we commemorate the baptism of the Lord Sunday. So this Sunday is actually called Baptism of the Lord Sunday, a day when we remember and celebrate Jesus' baptism. Why? Because now Jesus, we celebrated his birth. Now we celebrate the beginning of his ministry, his public ministry, as he, you know, submits himself for baptism. Uh, we need to start looking at now how Jesus is progressing through his incarnational birth, now into what he is uh, going to be accomplishing through his ministry. Okay, so the theme for this week or today, you could say, is that Jesus is our righteousness. And that is how I've titled my message, Jesus, our righteousness. As we focus on Jesus, uh, what is it that we understand about him that is so special to us, that indeed he is our righteousness? So these like the baptism of Jesus, a special event in Jesus' life. And it shows to us that he has chosen to defeat evil. And it must have great meaning for us. As Dr. Greg Williams, our president, was reminding us, God has made his choice. He said, choose life. And so everything Jesus does is to promote life, is to defeat death, sin, and evil, and to bring life. And the baptism of Jesus is something so significant that we must begin the year recognizing indeed how Jesus moves forward uh, to accomplish not just his earthly ministry, but his reformation and transformation out of us into his very own image. So today's sermon will be like, like a sequel to what we heard last Sunday, uh, the fact that Jesus indeed is our hope, recognizing and moving what, what that hope is. It is his righteousness that we can have. So, baptism of Jesus reveals that hope, especially for us as human beings who are broken. We are broken human beings. We struggle even every single day of our lives with all kinds of issues. Uh, how do we address that? How do we put that into perspective of our Christian lives? Uh, so we need to uh, look at this baptism uh, of that Jesus submitted himself to a little bit more closely. The obvious question is why? 
why would Jesus be baptized, right? And I still remember, I think Mr. Rao and Praveen, had, uh, we had gone to Gudiwara some years back and we were doing, a, a, you know, like a seminar for some of the pastors there. And there was a lady in the group and uh, we had invited questions. And the question she had asked me was, uh, why did Jesus get baptized? I'm not sure if that's a question that is in your mind. It certainly was in my mind. And when I told her or gave her the answer, as I understand it, she seemed extremely, uh, you know, certainly perturbed. Uh, she was not willing to accept my answer. I think she almost thought I was being heretical, <laughs> preaching some kind of heresy. So when I told her, that Jesus Christ was baptized for us. It was not for himself. He didn't have any sin to, be, to repent of. He lived a sinless life. But why would he be baptized? And I told her, Jesus was baptized for us, for you and for me. Ah, she couldn't understand. And I, and I thought to myself, you know, the reason why sometimes we struggle to accept that is we so very much are attuned to the fact that there is no free lunch, that we must always work for our lunch. <laughs> we must always work to get something. We are so focused on our works that I must do something. Somebody else doing everything for me? Ah, no, no, you know, I got to prove that I can do something. Now there is a, there is an, I mean, to say a place and uh, 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 certainly a place where we do need to do something, but we find it so difficult to accept the whole aspect of grace. We feel we got to earn a little bit, at least. We got to do something to earn, right? Not realizing, not realizing that none of our works can save us. You can do all you want and yet nothing will save us. And I think that's what she was struggling with. She felt, oh, Jesus, you know, cannot be baptized for us. I got to be baptized because I need to do something, right? I, 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 I tried to, I, I thought, you know, to see how I can uh, take the answer a little further and hopefully she will accept. I said, I told her, do you believe that Jesus died for you? And then she stopped for a moment and she didn't answer me. And then, and then I said, you know, why is it so hard for you to understand that Jesus can be baptized for you? If you believe Jesus died for you, why is it so difficult for you to accept the fact that he was even baptized for you? Right? And I don't know whether she really accepted my answer, but um, uh, let's move on with, uh, uh, you know, what we can understand from this uh, passage in scripture and the baptism of Jesus being today baptism of Jesus Sunday. Now, I realize that there are some aspects of this passage. There are certain aspects of uh, the, the baptism of Jesus and many aspects of the life of Jesus that we will not fully understand, right? Uh, we won't fully grasp the entire theological uh, you know, perspective of all of these, there are certain mysteries behind them, but to some extent we can, and let's attempt to do that. I go back to the passage in scripture and when it says, then Jesus came from Galilee to the Jordan to be baptized by John. Galilee was uh, the, the ancient northern kingdom of Israel, and he was coming down to Jordan. Uh, the river Jordan, of course, is, uh, you know, uh, has a significance in scripture. Uh, Jordan is where, uh, what was it? Uh, Moses, right? Moses handed over the leadership to Joshua. So it was a time of transition. And I think also Elijah and Elisha, there was a time of transition. Interesting, isn't it? John the Baptist was now transitioning with Jesus when he said, he must increase, I must decrease. So this is, Jordan is very significant that way, right? Uh, it was a time of transitioning. It was time of moving forward. 
And it goes on to say the scripture, but John tried to deter him, saying, I need to be baptized by you. And do you come to me? I think John was probably in the same boat as this lady that I was talking about. I don't think John understood. John did not fully understand. Or probably had the same misunderstanding. Jesus, why would you need baptism? And you're asking me to baptize you? Uh, you don't need baptism. It is I who need baptism. I need to do something, right? I need it. I have to get clean. So, John was saying, why don't you baptize me? And the, in, the, the reply of Jesus is very interesting. Jesus replied, let it be so now. I'm reading from the NIV. Let it be so now. In other words, uh, Jesus didn't bother to explain. You know? He didn't go into a huge theological discourse to help John understand what it meant. Right? Uh, uh, maybe Jesus thought that John would not catch it, catch the nuance of that perspective at that particular moment. And I say that because uh, it's a little consolation for us. You know, there are many things we might not fully understand. And it's okay. As long as we are sincere in our beliefs, as long as we are trying to understand, trying to learn, trying to grow, that's fine. Some things we may be beyond us. I keep getting asked the question, you know, please explain the Trinity. How can three and one be the same? <laughs> I said, you know, it may be very difficult for us to fully fathom and understand. But that is what the scripture indicates. And so just a thought uh, I'll mention, a bit of a solace for us when we don't understand that. But uh, Jesus goes on to say, it is proper for us to do this to fulfill all righteousness. Now, those words are very important. Jesus told John, please go ahead and baptize me because it is to fulfill all righteousness. And the interesting thing is John accepted, John obeyed. And that's what is important, that we also, even though we don't understand, we move by obedience. Obedience to God. Obedience to the word of God. Right? What is Jesus saying when he says, this is to fulfill all righteousness. And uh, this is something I would like to dwell uh, just a few moments on. What Jesus is helping us recognize is that God is the source of all righteousness. Right? Right? In other words, there is no true righteousness apart from him. All righteousness is of God. He is love. He is good. Nothing else is. Now, he makes something good. But all goodness and righteousness is in him. And so, Jesus says, "I, you must do this so as to fulfill all righteousness. Perhaps I let me use some more words uh, to explain this. Righteousness is not, doesn't come from us. We can't manufacture it, right? We can't work to get it. Uh, all we can accomplish is self-righteousness, not righteousness, the righteousness of God. We are very good at being self-righteous. All of humanity is like that. What is self-righteousness? To think we are righteous. When our righteousness is what? Uh, is, is it uh, Jeremiah who said it? Right? Isaiah who said it? Yeah, I'm mixing up the prophets here. Filthy rags. That is self-righteousness. Right? Self-righteousness is to make others believe that we are good when we are hiding a whole bunch of <laughs> stinking rags in our lives. Right? We want others to see us as though we are morally pure when uh, we have so much filth and dirt to, you know, to clean up. 
the worst is self righteousness is is the the manifestation of it is at its worst when we think we are superior to the others self righteousness makes us think like that oh i am better than him you know uh, both are falling in the pit but oh at least he fell first <laughs> so i am better than him you know so this this is the kind of righteousness that we have uh, been accustomed to self righteousness is nothing more but focused on the self and seeks to justify our behavior oh i'm justified even though i'm doing everything wrong i justify it and that is all the self righteous it's a distortion of the righteousness of god there is a term called toxic perfection <laughs> i've come across that for the first time it's it's it's, it's toxic perfection is wearing a mask what is your mask oh it looks very nice but what's inside is a den of thieves right it's like what jesus said about graves you whitewash them but inside all dead men bones wearing a mask to protect ourselves uh, or rather uh, you know to to make others believe that we are so morally good while we remain in bondage to our sins uh, and it's toxic because we are still in bondage it is eating away into us it is corrupting us and we don't recognize it but we are projecting a perfectionist image while the toxin inside is completely uh, ruining us right? and because of that we suffer guilt we suffer shame uh, uh, and all of those things but jesus is saying john baptized me for it is proper to do this to fulfill all righteousness what is jesus saying to fulfill when he says to fulfill all righteousness jesus basically means that he is taking the burden of making us righteous because he knows we cannot make ourselves righteous he has taken the burden to make us righteous it is not by our works that we become righteous because the apostle paul clearly says salvation is not by works but by grace through faith in jesus christ that's why we have the faith element that's why we have the grace element right that is where jesus is able to fulfill all righteousness he is making us righteous that means once again you and i cannot be perfect on our own we just cannot be perfect on our own we cannot pretend to be righteous because that's self righteousness again so why was jesus baptized so that he can cleanse us by becoming us you see it's an internal dynamic it's not external he is not doing it externally he is doing it internally right going into the very heart that's a song we sang right the heart of worship going into the very heart and making us righteous from inside out not outside in what how you might mention that see jesus did not remain external in his dealing with us he did not remain peripheral i'm using these words and i'm wondering to myself if he had a translation <laughs> we would struggle with these words right i don't know uh, we need to take a translation class i think on all of this right but what well, maybe i'll make it simpler jesus didn't take soap and water to wash and make us righteous did he he didn't bring a bucket of water and you know and use soap of course he washed the disciples feet that was one again metaphorical but he didn't clean us by soap and water how did he clean us say it again uh, by his precious blood see that's something internal right by his precious blood he has cleansed us you see jesus knew we need a deep clean not a surface clean we need a deep clean and that is the only way we can remain clean 
If it is a surface clean, <laughs> the inside uncleanliness will come out. But he, need, he needs to clean us internally. And that is where this whole baptism thing came. You know, the he being baptized. So what Jesus was doing when he was being baptized was he was immersing himself into our world. He was immersing himself into us. For what reason? So that someday he could immerse us into his world, into his divine relationship with Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Right? So Jesus' baptism represented the baptism of all humanity. Remember the choice that God made. Choose life, as was given to us by Dr. Greg. Choose life. That's the decision God has made. And here Jesus is now accomplishing and putting into action that decision. I am bringing life. I am doing it through this baptism. Though he was perfect, he allied himself with sinners. He took that sin upon himself. Although he was the savior, he numbered himself among the ones needing salvation. He walked in our shoes, literally. He took on our flesh so that he would do a deep clean, a complete clean, a clean from inside, not just external. So that's the reason why we say Jesus was baptized for our sake. That is what it means when he said to fulfill all righteousness, to make us righteous to the full. He can fulfill, and only he can do it. Only he can do it because he is our righteousness. Only in God is true righteousness. And that's why we as Christians constantly say salvation is in Christ. But of course, we have to be careful how we say that because some people get offended. Oh, why, why do you think that only Christ done? Aren't other gods going to save us? Well, the way we understand it is something that we need to be careful to explain that when we say and when we use this phrase, salvation is found only in Christ. We should not say it arrogantly. We must say it you know, in, a very, in a very humble manner, you know, helping people to understand that you need a deep clean. You need to be clean from the inside. Only Jesus has done it. I have no... I don't know who else has done it because he came in the flesh and took my sinful person and cleansed it deep inside. Now, another obvious question. Okay. Do I have a part in all of this? <laughs> What's my part? What should I do? Should I not try to be righteous? Should I not try to do things, uh, you know, uh, make myself righteous or do righteous things. Uh, Je what, what has Jesus done? Maybe he's done 90%. Shouldn't I do 10%? Some people say, no, Jesus did 50%. So I must do 50%. What is, the, what is the answer to that? And there is an answer. And uh, there is a part we play. But we need to recognize Jesus did his part 100%. Don't get confused on that. So you and I can be so absolutely assured that Jesus has guaranteed salvation. He has guaranteed salvation because he did it 100%. But once again, uh, we, we, you know, we don't feel nice unless we do something. Right? We, got to, we, make, we got to make ourselves feel nice. I, I've done something, you know. But yes, there is something. And uh, But that should not be mistaken to think that, oh, I'm contributing to my salvation. No, certainly not. You cannot. right? But look, let me give you three thoughts on this. One is acknowledge our need for Jesus to be our righteousness. Right? And John the Baptist recognized that. He recognized that Jesus is to be his righteousness. That is why he said, I need to be baptized by you, Lord. <laughs> why do I need to baptize you? I need to be baptized. 
So he recognized that he needed a deep clean. So in other words, simply exercising our faith that we need Jesus. That's why faith is so important. Right? Faith is so very important. Recognizing from the depth of our hearts that we need Jesus. Believing that when God has helped us to recognize our unrighteousness, he is going to deal with it. Jesus is going to deal with that. Do we recognize that? I can't do a thing about it, but Jesus will help me. Jesus is, has already cleansed me. All right. The need to realize and acknowledge our sinfulness is a very important aspect of how we respond to the baptism of Jesus. Our realization that, it, that a particular sin or sinfulness is the first step in our liberation from it. Okay? I remember the song along with the song that we sang. Uh, I need you. I need you every hour I need you. You know that song that we sing. Uh, it, 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 it explains uh, very much that that is what we have to recognize and acknowledge. Secondly, a second thought. While we acknowledge our need for Jesus, we also have to submit and actively participate in the work of the Spirit. We have to submit to the Holy Spirit so that our thoughts and our actions are in conformity. That is our part. Right? We are submitting to the lead of the Holy Spirit. And that is once again we come to John the Baptist. So when John the Baptist, when Jesus said, let it be now, let's do this baptism, what did John? How did John respond? He consented, yes. He basically said, yes, Lord. And he went along with the lead of Jesus. John listened to Jesus. He submitted himself to the leading of Christ. So doing everything to allow Jesus and to allow the Holy Spirit to transform us, to renew our minds, so we get in alignment with the Holy Spirit. We try to do that, you know, uh, regularly. Why? Because now the Spirit has descended upon us. If you remember, I'll come to that in a moment. The heavens were opened. And the Spirit came down in the form of a dove. That was like the anointing of the Messiah. But then, what are we promised? The Spirit will come upon us. Right? Uh, why would the Spirit come upon us? Because the Spirit now continues to do the work of Jesus. What Jesus has started, the Spirit now, that's the ministry of the Holy Spirit today. As uh, he uh, leads us into righteousness. And finally, a third thought I'd like to leave you with. Make room for God in our daily lives. Right? While we submit, we don't do it as a one-time, you know, uh, thing. And then forget about it. No, we are doing it on a daily basis. Making room for God and the Holy Spirit in our daily lives, in our daily activities. You see, we are moving towards God. We need to move towards God. If you remember how Adam and Eve were told, you know, uh, leave your father and mother. Be joined together. Move towards each other. You cannot be joined if you're not moving towards each other. If you're moving away from each other, you cannot be joined. If you're moving away from the Holy Spirit, you cannot be. You know, you cannot make room for the Holy Spirit. So you have to move towards God. And that would mean certain spiritual disciplines like what we are doing today. It's coming for worship, listening to the message, and uh, participating in worship. You know, uh, prayer, uh, the, the, the learning and the understanding and, uh, you know, that we do regularly in our Bible studies, in our daily devotions. All of those are aspects of moving towards God. They don't make you, you know, uh, create righteousness. But when you move towards God, God, you know, uh, gives you his righteousness in a greater degree. So our Christian walk is a full-time walk, no part-time business here. Uh, 
uh, we don't believe in part-time jobs, part-time Christians. It has to be a full-time thing. You know, everything we do, everything we do should be guided by and inspired of the Holy Spirit. Okay, so we have studied and learned about how or why Jesus was baptized. What is our part in it? I hope you don't, uh, you know, uh, mistake that we are creating righteousness. Certainly not. We it, it cannot come from us. But let me now, as we conclude, go to that last part of the reading. Then John consented and says, as soon as Jesus was baptized, he went up out of the water. At that moment, heaven was opened. And he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting on him. And a voice from heaven said, this is my son whom I love. With him I am well pleased. Uh, that baptism opens up the heaven. Right? And it was in Jordan. If you remember, the Jordan was parted when Joshua was to, the Israelites was to go in. The Red Sea was parted. But now the heavens are parted. <laughs> right? It's almost like saying, you know, it's, a, it's a just a, it's, it's, it's a, a, a metaphor of heaven and earth coming together. Heaven and earth now. I mean, this is the plan of God. Heaven and earth will now merge in Jesus. Right? In Jesus, it will, it will happen. And the Holy Spirit descends and rests upon Jesus. Once again, like I mentioned earlier, the Holy Spirit descends upon us to inhabit us. Right? And the word of God saying, this is my son whom I love, with him I am well pleased. Right? is something that we can take so much encouragement from that this Father in the heaven will also be pleased to love us just as he loves Jesus. In one sense, it is a declaration that this human Jesus, right, is somebody God is pleased with. He's baptized for us. And hence, God is pleased with us. He's pleased to bring heaven to us. Right? Why? Because of the word or, or the work of Jesus Christ. So, on this, uh, brethren, on this baptism of the Lord's Sunday, let us celebrate our freedom in Christ. And this is, this is indeed the real freedom that we can experience. Uh, there is no need for shame. You know, the toxic perfection. Let's get rid of that. Let's not pretend anymore. Uh, let's have the courage to come to the throne of grace because God has accepted us in Jesus. He's accepted us in Jesus. Right? Uh, Jesus has become our righteousness. God has now opened the heavens for us in that respect. And we are free from debt. And we don't have to worry about fixing ourselves, you know. And I say that very carefully uh, so that we don't think that, you know, um, we have to do something to make ourselves righteous. No. Jesus is fixing us. Jesus is already on the job in the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> Christ has made himself one of us in order that we become, you know, righteous to fulfill all righteousness in us. And so when we struggle with sin, all I can say is just continue to submit to the Holy Spirit and he will cleanse us. Uh, that's not an excuse for trying to, you know, keep Remaining in sin. That is toxic perfection. <laughs> uh, but we need to submit to the Lord. Confess that it's, that's what the Apostle John said. Confess it. Allow the Holy Spirit to move into those areas of your lives where you and I may be struggling. And we all struggle. Uh, we all struggle. But Jesus is our righteousness, ultimately. And that is something that we should not forget. So don't forget those three points I mentioned. Acknowledge your need for Jesus. 
uh, submit and actively participate in the work of the Holy Spirit in our lives, allowing him to uh, help us to conform our thoughts and actions to Christ and making room for God in our daily lives. That is the faith with which we move. And that's the faith with which we move in 2023. Eyes on, eyes focused on Jesus, knowing he's our righteousness and he will finish the work that he started in us. Don't abandon him because he will never abandon you. Let's participate in the communion then as uh, uh, we recognize how much Jesus is our focus and the communion brings it all together. I'm going to read uh, this time from John chapter 6 so that we recognize the communion and the righteousness that we just spoke about coming together. And John chapter 6, beginning in verse 53, it says, Jesus said to them, very truly, I tell you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise them up at the last day. For my flesh is real food, and my blood is real drink. That is where the real righteousness is. It's in Jesus. Whoever eats my flesh, reading in verse 56, and drinks my blood remains in me and I in them. And that is what we have been asked to do. Remain in Jesus. He will finish the task. He will cleanse you. Don't be discouraged over, you know, uh, faults that we still have. He will cleanse you. That is his promise. He's, he has chosen life for us. Verse 57, just as the living Father has sent me, and I, love, I, and I live because of the Father, so the one who feeds on me will live because of me. Finally, in verse 58, this is the bread that come, came down from heaven. Your ancestors ate manna and died, but whoever feeds on this bread will live forever. Let's pray, and then we will partake in the communion. Gracious, loving Father, we just thank you that you have reminded us again as we begin a new year that you are our righteousness. Thank you for that, Lord. How, how, I mean, we can't thank you enough that in our sinfulness, we don't see a hope that we can ever get righteous in the way you are righteous. Thank you, Father, for your incarnation. Thank you for taking our flesh and coming into our flesh. Thank you for the deep clean. Thank you for the internal dynamic of cleaning our hearts by your blood and help us as we participate in this bread and wine, symbolizing your broken body for us and your righteousness. Even as we sang that we see your love in your broken body going on to the cross in the shed, shed blood that you gave for us. Thank you, Father. And so we ask your blessings upon this and blessings upon us as we turn our eyes towards you and we uh, live trying to allow you to lead us in everything we do, say, and think. Have mercy on us. And thank you for your mercy that we can never be perfect without you, Lord. Thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please come forward. Take your elements. And then we will participate together like we normally do.
I'll give you a moment to access your the bread and the wine. Uh, right. The body of Jesus Christ broken for us for our healing. The blood of Jesus Christ shed for us so that we might have his righteousness. 